Human rights advocates say the killing of disarmed Funsenpec forces during the 1997 coup d'etat amounted to extrajudicial killing and war crimes. <laughs> Monitoring manager of Cambodia human rights organization Likido, Um Samat, says the coup was a tragic event that caused hundreds of deaths and injuries, and no one has ever been held accountable. He said we must remember such a bloody event in order to prevent similar human rights abuses from happening in the future. <laughs> មានពន្លឺថាទទួលបានយុទ្ធធម៌ដល់ឯកទេវាជាអឺនេះតាំងពីមួយយ៉ាងធំហើយខ្ញុំក៏បារម្ភថាកាលណាបើយើងមិនម
ແລະគឺគឺគឺគឺគឺគឺគឺគឺគឺគឺគឺគឺគឺគឺគឺគឺគឺគឺគឺគឺគឺគឺគឺគឺគឺគឺគឺគឺគឺគឺគឺគឺ
the United Nations Transitional Authority in Cambodia from seven provinces. Untag was supposed to be leading a peaceful transition to power, so did nothing. Brad Adams said Ranarud was no fan of the compromise, but even so, it was Hun Sen who actually launched the coup in 1997. He said the signs were already apparent in April of 1996 when the UN political representative in Cambodia, Benny Widjono, sent a cable to New York warning that Hun Sen intended to hold power by force. Hun Sen was ang- angry because Ranarid in January of 1996, at a meeting of Funsenpec, had decided that the coalition with Hun Sen was no longer working, and that instead of uh, remaining in a coalition with Hun Sen after the 1998 elections, that Hun Sen-Pek would try to win the elections and become the majority party. Hun Sen had never accepted the idea of elections determining who would be in government. Hun Sen believed that the CPP had the right and should always remain in government, whether through an election or through force. And so uh, Hun Sen started talking to other members of the CPP about uh, using force to get rid of Hun Sen Pek. And that is what Benny Vidiono was reporting back to New York as early as April 1996. Adam says at that time, the president of the Cambodian People's Party, Chia Sim, and the minister of defense, Tay Ban, did not support Hun Sen's plan to launch a coup. But that did not deter Hun Sen. However, in response to a question asked by a foreign reporter after his successful overthrow of the prince, Hun Sen accused the prince of using force first. That seemed to be, sir, the, the use of force. Do you regret the use of force? That's what they seem to be complaining about. Do you regret the, the use of force? I, I, I afraid not. They use, not us. Why, why you continue to say like that? It was the Paris Peace Accords in 1991 that ended the Cambodian-Vietnamese War and Communist control over the country. The Accords also established the mechanism for elections in 1993. However, Brad Adams says the 1997 coup destroyed the progress made in those elections. Untag had organized the 93 elections to be the beginning of freedom for the Cambodian people, and those freedoms would later be enshrined in the national constitution in the same year. Brad Adams, who is now executive director of Human Rights Watch in Asia, says that without that freedom, people wouldn't have had hope and that it was Untag that brought hope to Cambodians at that time. Um, And people had no freedom. And when you have no freedom, you don't really have much hope. And Untag brought unprecedented freedom. It brought freedom of the press, freedom of assembly and association, the right to form NGOs, the right to form political parties. And it brought an election that was supervised uh, by the United Nations. And people thought, Um, As imperfect as their leaders were, I think most people thought Hun Sen and Ron Ridd were imperfect leaders, that um, the country would start making progress. But the coup um, took Cambodia right back to those dark days where uh, powerful people decided to hold on to power through force instead of through the will of the people. And so that was very depressing for a lot of Cambodians. And I remember so many of my Cambodian friends telling me how depressed and upset they were, that they thought that their leaders wouldn't do this anymore. Um, But they saw that, in fact, they still were doing this. And we haven't had a free and fair election since. There has not been a free and fair election in 98, 2003, 2008, 2013. They've all been tainted very badly. And so we still haven't had a government formed by the people by the people's votes in Cambodia. Adams went on to say that even though it's been more than 20 years since the extrajudicial executions were carried out, it is still very important to identify the criminals and related people and sentence them. 
He says it's crucial for two main reasons. One is personal and one is political. The personal reason is that if your family member had been arrested, stripped of his clothes, handcuffed, and then taken to a location, usually outside of Phnom Penh, and then shot in the head and killed, you would want there to be justice. You would want the people who did that to be held accountable. And I think you would never stop wanting that. I mean, that is how most human beings react. They always want justice in cases like this. I personally was working for the United Nations Human Rights Office at the time, and I dug some of those bodies up. These people were taken out uh, outside of Phnom Penh, in some cases to Kampong Spu. Pick Nil was one place uh, where I ended up digging up the body of a man who we found only wearing shorts. He was handcuffed and he had a bullet in his head and he had been buried in a very shallow grave, which I, as a UN, United Nations human rights investigator, found, um, and we were able to identify the body later. Adams says that in addition to the personal desire for justice, there is also a political and social need for justice, because those who commit such crimes will keep doing so if no one is holding them accountable. There was complete impunity for people who were working for Hun Sen P during that coup. And a lot of the people who were involved in killings then are now very powerful. Just for example, General Chap Pickaday was identified as being responsible for some of the extrajudicial executions after the coup. He was only a colonel then. He is now a full general. He is very close to Hun Sen. And what did we find? We found in 2014, when there were demonstrations after the election, uh, that his uh, his soldiers were involved in repressing the demonstrations. So some of these very people responsible for the abuses during the coup continue to be responsible for abuses now. And we have to end the culture of impunity, which says that if you are powerful or if you work for Hun Sen or you're a senior official, you can get away with murder. Both Likido Human Rights Monitoring Manager, Um Samat, and Brad Adams of Human Rights Watch think that seeking justice for victims in the present time is a tough job, but that it's important to not lose hope or give up the effort. Adams says that disseminating information about human rights abuses and reminding people about the abuses is very important no matter what the circumstances. Things can change. and um, Nobody has a crystal ball. Nobody knows when that's going to happen. But I can tell you in Burma and in Malaysia, Nothing would have changed if people hadn't continued to publish the facts, hadn't continued to speak the truth to powerful people, hadn't identified perpetrators of human rights violations, people who were corrupt, um, and hadn't kept campaigning and being active. So I don't know how Cambodia's story is going to turn out, but I, I do believe that uh, you know, evil people who commit human rights abuses and are extremely corrupt will be held accountable someday. They will lose power. Um, and all the work that very brave Cambodians are doing, including journalists uh, and human rights workers, will um, have impact someday. I don't know when it's going Adams to went on to say the international and national human rights communities consider the killing at that time a crime that violated the laws of war. He said that if the loss of lives during the coup was the result of clashes in the battlefield, or if the killing was accidental, it's exempted. However, when the victims are arrested, blindfolded, handcuffed behind their backs, and shot in the head, it is a war crime, in addition to being immoral, disgusting, and inhumane. According to international law, some types of crimes do not have a statute of limitations, meaning no matter how long ago the crime was committed, the criminals can still be prosecuted. Those include war crimes, crimes against humanity, and genocide. It is that law that provided the legal basis for creating the Khmer Rouge Tribunal, which is currently trying former leaders of the Khmer Rouge regime, despite the fact that their crimes occurred more than 39 years ago.
Likudo and Human Rights Watch say even though the current government is not willing to investigate and bring charges against the perpetrators of the coup, Cambodians and the human rights community must keep reminding society about the severity of these human rights abuses. That it's necessary to send a warning message to human rights abusers, as well as prevent the impunity which has allowed some to get away with their crimes. <laughs> On July 29, 2018, 21 years after the coup, Cambodia again held national elections. In the lead-up to the elections, the Cambodian government, still under the control of Prime Minister Hun Sen and his ruling CPP, began an assault on the opposition, civil society, and the media. Members of parliament representing the opposition were beaten unconscious in broad daylight in front of the parliament. Opposition and NGO members were imprisoned. 32 independent radio transmissions and an independent newspaper were shut down. Other media were muzzled. The president of the opposition CNRP, Kem Soka, was imprisoned and his party was outlawed. Two journalists from Radio Free Asia were imprisoned for nine months on espionage charges. They have since been released on bail, but charges are still pending. <laughs> <laughs>